Hello, welcome to the special CUBE conversation. I'm John Furrier, your host of the CUBE here in Palo Alto, California. We're still remoting in, getting great guests in. Events are coming back. Next year we will be at a bunch of different events and you'll see the CUBE everywhere. But this conversation is about network challenges in a distributed hybrid workforce era. We got Atif Saeed, Principal Product Manager, Edge Networking Solutions at Dell Technologies, and Rob McBride, Channel and Partner Sales Engineer at Versa Networks. Gentlemen, thanks for coming on this CUBE conversation. Thank you, John. Thank you, John. So first of all, obviously with the pandemic and now we're moving out of the pandemic, even with Omicron out there, we still see visibility into kind of back to work and events and it's, but it's clearer hybrid environment, cloud hybrid work. This has been a huge opening of everyone's eyes around <laughs> network security, uh, provisioning, you know, unexpected disruptions around everyone being worked at home. Nobody really forecasted that, the fact that the whole workforce would be remote coming in. So again, put a lot of pressure on the network challenges uh, over, over the past two years. How is it coming out of this different? What's your guys take on this? You know, uh, you know to that when we start looking at it, let's you know, kind of focus a little bit on challenges. You know, you know when this all kind of started off, you know, obviously as you stated, right, everyone was kind of taken by surprise in a way, right? What do we do? We don't know what to do at this moment. And, you know, I go back and I remember a customer giving me a call, um, you know, when they were at first looking at, you know, your traditional WAN transformation. They wanted to change their branches to do something from an SD-WAN perspective and then the pandemic hit. And their question to me was, Rob, what do I do or what do I need to start thinking about? Now, all of a sudden to your point, right? Everyone now is no longer in the office. and how do I get them to connect? And more importantly, now that I can maybe figure out a way to connect them, how do I actually see what they're doing and be able to control what they're actually now accessing? Because I no longer have that level of control as of them coming into the office. And so a lot of customers, you know, we're, we're beginning to develop kind of homegrown solutions, uh, look at various different things to uh, kind of quick hot patches, if you will, um, to address the remote workers coming in and things of that nature. And what we see in kind of progression through all this is uh, as, as opposed to just solving, getting a user to connect into, the, into a, an environment that IT can provide, you know, continuity for, they started coming up with other challenges to the point of security. They started, you know, I have other customers calling me up and saying, you know, I, I've now got a ransomware problem, right? So, uh, you know, what do I do about that? And, and what are the things I need to kind of consider with respect to now I'm much more vulnerable because my, my, my branch estate has basically become much more diversified. And solutions and things that they're looking for regards obviously around security, connectivity, they're been challenged with addressing how do they unify their levels of visibility without over encumbering themselves and how they actually manage now this kind of much more kind of distributed kind of network, if you will, right? Um, so things around, you know, looking at, you know, acronyms around from like a ZTNA or, you know, cloud security and all this fun stuff starts coming into play. But what it, what it points to is that the biggest challenge IT has had is how do they converge networking and security together and provide a ubiquitous and uniform policy architecture to identify their users to connect and access the applications that are relevant to the business um, and be able to have that um, uniformity between whether it's the branch or them being remote. And that's part of the, what we've kind of seen as this progression through the last two years and kind of solutions that they're looking for to kind of help them address that. It's almost like the, it's a good thing in a way. It, it actually opens up the kimono and say, hey, this is the real world. We got to prepare for this next generation. Uh, Tiff, I want to get your take because you know, remember the old days we were like, oh yeah, only, we got to prepare for these scenarios where maybe 30% will be dialing on the VLAN or remotely. You know, it's not 30%, it was like 100%. <laughs> so budgets are not out of whack and yet they want more resiliency at the edge, right? So, so one, I didn't budget for it, I didn't predict it. And it's got to be better, faster, cheaper, more secure. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so John, the difference is, is that, you know, Dell, for instance, has already, was already working towards this distributed model, right? Um, the pandemic just accelerated that transformation. So, so when customers came to us and said, oh, we've got a problem um, with our workforce and our users being so geographically suddenly dispersed, um, you know, we had some insight that we could immediately lean on. Um, we had already started working on solutions and building those platforms that can help them address those, those problems, right? Because I mean, we'd already done studies uh, before this, right? We had done studies and we had come back on this whole work from home or remote office 
scenario. And, and the, the results were pretty unanimous in that customers were all, or users were always complaining about, um, you know, application performance issues and, and uh, you know, connectivity issues and, and things like that. So we, we, we kind of knew about this. And so we were able to proactively start building solutions. And so, you know, so when a customer comes, just like Rob was talking about, uh, you know, their infrastructure wasn't set up for everybody to suddenly move uh, on day one uh, and start accessing all the corporate resources uh, where the majority of the organization is accessing corporate resources from away from campus, right? So we, we, uh, we have solutions, we've been building solutions and we have guidance to offer these customers as they try to modernize their network and address these problems. Well, that's a great segue to the next topic, talk track is, you know, what is a network, what is network modernization, right? So let's, let's define that if you don't mind, but while well, I got you guys here, you're both pros, get that sound bite, but then let's get into the benefits of the outcomes from what that enables. So if you guys want to take a stab at defining what is network modernization mean? I think there's a lot of definitions, uh, right? Kind of depends on your point, uh, your point of view and where you're, where you're responsible for um, from a network or within the stack. Um, you know, our, from a take obviously is, you know, working, working from a vendor and with solutions that we provide, modernization is really around solutions that begin to look at more software defined architectures and definitions to begin a level of decoupling between, you know, points of control, hardware and software and other kind of points of visibility and automation. Um, to the point where, where things are, let's, let's kind of put in air quotes in a sense of being more digitized in a, in a sense, like even how we're looking at things from a consumerization perspective. But looking at things that much more, um, more cloud aware, cloud specific, cloud native, um, inbuilt automation, as well as inbuilt um, uh, kind of analytics, where things are much more in a in a broader SDN kind of a construct would be a, a form of a definition from a, from a from a from a modernization perspective. Now, to the other element of your kind of a question in regards to kind of the benefits that come as a result of this. Um, so, as customers have been in the last 24 months uh, looking at different solutions to address part of what we've been talking about, um, part of it is you know, when you're looking at whether it's like using a word like sassy um, to kind of define you know, how are uh, enterprises looking for ZTNA based solutions or cloud security to augment their, their overall needs. The benefits that they're finding are simplicity of management because they're now looking for more uniform solutions that can address secure access for remote workers in addition to their own kind of uh, traditional access as it relates to their offices to better visibility because as this uniformity of this kind of architecture, they're now able to actually really see the level of context, right? I can see you, John, as far as where you're coming in and accessing what applications on what devices. And now I have a means to actually apply a policy to that matters to me as a business from an IT perspective to protect me as the business but also ensure that you're actually authorized and accessing things that I have from an IT regula reg regulations perspective. So benefits in the summary are kind of like you know, inbuilt automation, better you know, things get done faster. Things repair on their own in, in a different way as a result of automation. Greater visibility, now they have much more greater insights into what we are doing as users of the overall IT infrastructure and better overall control that's been ultimately simplified as a result of consolidation and unification. That's awesome insight. Uh, uh, Tiff, what's your take on um, yeah. the benefits of mo uh, network modernization? So, so I'd like to sort of double down on, on uh, you know, something Rob said, right? So the visibility, right? So enhanced visibility um, in layman's terms, that just means more insight. More insight means the ability to implement best practices around application usage, application performance. Um, more insights means control that IT departments are, are needing. They need that uh, to manage and address security threats, right? To be able to um, identify an abnormal traffic pattern or unauthorized data movement, um, to be able to push updates um, and, and patches quickly. Um, so, so it's really about you know, that, that manageability, that, that level of control gives them the ability to offer a resilient and secure uh, underlying networking infrastructure. Um, and then, you know, finally, um, one of the key benefits is cost savings. Uh, you know, everybody is trying to be more efficient. Um, and so from, from our perspective, it's, it's really about building an open platform. Um, you know, we built a platform on the x86 based platform. We've, 
We chose that because we wanted to tap into a mature ecosystem that you know customers can leverage as they, you know, as they build their uh, build towards their modernization modernization goals. Um, and so, we're like tech, leveraging technologies like UCPs, so universal customer premise equipments, and so that's really just an open hardware platform. But what you get by consolidating your network functions like routing and firewall and WAN optimization, you and when you consolidate it all onto a single device, you get hardware savings, cost savings. Um, you you get operational uh, savings as well, right? So you've uh, a common hardware infrastructure means a common deployment model, means a streamlined operations, means uh, fewer truck rolls, right? So, so there's a tremendous amount of, uh, of, of benefit from the cost standpoint as well. Um, because from our perspective, it's really that what customers are looking for, they need enterprise grade solutions uh, that can scale in a cost effective manner. That's awesome. You guys mentioned SASE earlier. I'm like, my first one, oh, sir, software as a service is very sassy. Um, big modern application movement. So I always get, uh, when I hear SASE, I think, you know, uh, a kind of uh, a term around SAS, software as a service. But for you guys, it's talking about secure access service edge, which is a huge category growth right now where, you know, for security and networking, it's a huge discussion. SD-WAN fits into that somehow because it used to be campus networking before, now it's, Everyone's world is the same now, it's connected. So SASE is huge. How does that fit into SD-WAN and the trend of the SAS? Is it the same? What's the difference? Because SD-WAN has been booming for the past decade as well um, in terms of trends. How are you guys seeing those converging in? What's the difference? Um, you know, I'd like to also agree with you that SD-WAN has been booming the last couple of years, right? You know, kind of, kind of bread and butter part <laughs> of what we've been doing. Uh, but, you know, to your question in regards to Kind of its linkage relative to SASE, right? You know, as you articulate, right? See SASE is secure access service edge from a definition of the acronym, so in support. Um, it's first kind of good to kind of define it a little bit, maybe for some of those that may not be overly familiar with it. And I like to kind of dumb it down a little bit to the point of SASE is really an architecture that is around, you know, the convergence of networking and security being put together in a uniform platform or service. Um, that is delivered from both the cloud as well as addressing, you know, their their kind of traditional WAN requirements. Now, digging in, SASE is broken into two little buckets, right? It's broken into a network layer and a security layer. And by its definition, right, by by a particular analyst, um, the network component, a big portion of that is SD WAN. And so SD WAN providing that value associated to what it does, uh, you know, dynamic link steering, automation, application attachment, and so on and so forth, is a core element of the foundation of the network layer associated to SASE. And then the other element of SASE is around the security bit. And so they're very much intrinsically linked, whether, you know, for example, like Versa, just to kind of, you know, mention this here, the, the, the SASE cloud that we've built for our customers to leverage for private access, public access, you know, secure internet, CASB, DLP type of services, is built upon SD-WAN. In addition to our customers that are using SD-WAN for their traditional WAN are using SD-WAN to connect to that cloud. So it's very, very much linked. And they kind of go hand in hand, depending on your approach to the broader architecture. And, you know, another, another point I'll bring into that, what, what it also highlights is that whether it's around SASE or not, when we, when in, in pertinent to everything we've been other, we've kind of been talking about, the other thing that's coming with SD-WAN intrinsically and natively is really the concept of security. Um, it's around whether it's security at the branch or whether it's around some form of you know, identity management or uh, a point of improving posture for the, for the enterprise to um, you know, obviously inspect traffic at the branch or remotely. But what we're seeing at a trend wise, uh, which you know, in part by customer adoption from our own platform, if you will, is basically security and SD-WAN coming together whether for your traditional WAN transformation or as a result of SASE services for a, a hybrid means of connectivity, right? Remote workers, hybrid workforce going into the cloud for, for their connectivity needs and optimizations in addition to obviously the, the enterprise's branch transformations. I like that native uh, aspect of it. We used to joke and call SD-WAN, SD-Cloud because it's <laughs> we're all using cloud technologies. Mm -hmm. Talk about the security impact real quick, if you don't mind. I want to just double click on them, what you mentioned there because I think the cloudification plus the security piece seems to be a key part of this dynamic. Is that true or, or did I get that right? What's, what's this all mean with cloudification? 
Yeah, I, I would, I, I, I agree with, I guess, kind of where you're leading into that is, you know, review all of us here right now, exactly in talking with you right now, right, John, is, um, as you stated in the beginning, we're all remote. And so from a business perspective, right, we are accessing, or from an engagement, we're accessing a cloud service. Now, what's critical for us as, you know, obviously enterprise employees is that our means of accessing this cloud service needs to have some level of hardening. We need to protect, right, not only our own asset that we're using, right, our laptops or other machinery that you're using to connect to the network, but in addition to protect our company, right? So our company also needs to protect it. So how can we do that, right? How can we do that in a very fast and distributed way? Sure, we can put security endpoints at every location with every user and every home. And that's one means of a, of a particular solution. So your point about cloud is now take all of that and bring into the cloud where you have a much more distributed means, right? And much more dynamically scalable approach to actually doing that level of inspection, posture and, and enforcement. And so that's kind of where the, the, you know, the rubber meets the road, right? Is for us to access those cloud applications the cloud that we're using as a conduit for security as well as network also is now even connected and optimized paths to applications like what we're using right now, right? To, to, to do this um, um, conversation. So that's kind of where it, it meets together. And the security element is because we're so diverse, we just need, we, we, we need to ensure, right? We're all much, we're much more vulnerable, right? My home network is, you know, Maybe arguably, maybe not as secure as when I go into an office, it's right? So secure than most people because you get work for Versa networks. <laughs> I, I, I could make that argument, yes, right? But you know, the the average most of us remote workers, you know, our homes aren't as hardened, and so we we point a point of risk, right? And so as we as we go to cloud apps, we're more connected to the internet, right? You know, the 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 point of being able to do this enforcement from a SASE concept. Um, helps provide that improved posture for enterprises to to secure their traffic and get visibility into that. Joking aside, all, all my network engineer friends are secure as you read about, and I always joke to the mail, well, you messed mess the wrong network engineer by going after them, their house. Uh, it's fear phishing you trying to get in, into your network. Uh, I, mm -hmm. I'd say if I want to bring this back because what we're bringing up here is cloud is actually enabling more on-premises because you're working at home, that's a premise, right? So you're also edge is a premise edge and cloud and cloud kind of eliminates all this notion of what is cloud and edge, but at the end of the day, it's where you are, right? So having the performance and the security and the partnership that like say with Dell, I know you guys have been on this for a while because I've been covering it, but the notion of edge completely changes now because what does that even mean? A home's edge is the camp, the data center's an edge, the, uh, the car's an edge, the telco monopole's an edge. This is a big deal. This is the about the unification. This is all about making it all work. What's your, what's your take on this from the Dell perspective? Yeah, and I think I mean it, that's I mean you you kind of summarize it right. I mean, what does edge mean to you, right? It's I mean so every time I have a conversation with with somebody, I always start with let's define what your edge is, um, and so you know from from our perspective, from the Dell perspective, is you know we believe that. Um, we want to provide enterprise grade uh, infrastructure. We want to give our customers the right tools. And we're seeing that with this trend of a hybrid workforce, a, a geographically dispersed user base, um, we're seeing a tremendous need for, um, you know, from IT departments uh, for tools, for solutions that can give them the control that they can sort of push out into their networks to ensure a safe and secure uh, external access to corporate resources, right? And so that's what we're committed to, is making sure that that, that management layer by either uh, developing the solutions in-house, bringing the right partners uh, to the table, and just ensuring that our customers have the right tools, because this sort of trend uh, or this, this, uh, uh, this new normal is not going away. Uh, and so we're, we have to adapt. Great insight, thanks for coming on. Rob, I'll give you the final word. What's changed the most in your opinion with customers' environments around how they're handling their networks as we come out of the pandemic, which has proven kind of which projects are working, which ones aren't, where to double down on and what was screwed up. I mean, come on, this is, we're kind of seeing that they all play out. What's your, what's your take on as we come through the pandemic and people come out of this, what's the big learning? Well, that you need partners, 
right? Okay, so it's not even from a vendor perspective. What I mean by partners is what we're finding and what I think a lot of either customers I've engaged with and, and others is this ain't easy. For even as much as we can within the technology vendor um, market, right, is to make things easier to do. There's a lot of technology and the enterprise IT is recognized they need a lot of these building blocks right, to, to accomplish a lot of different things, whether it's around automation to uh, in other tools as, as Octave was leading into. And so it, we're, we're finding that, you know, a lot of our, our base or our interactions are really trying to identify an appropriate partner that can help not only talk to the technology, but help them actually understand all the various different, you know, multicolored Lego blocks they got to put together, but also help, help them actually put that into a realization, right? And, you know, and then be able to then give the keys to them so they can eventually drive the car, right? And so the learning that we're seeing here is this is a lot of tech. Um, there's a lot of new tech, new approaches to existing technology of things that they've actually done. And they're 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 looking for help, right? And so they're looking for kind of, let's call it like trusted advisor kind of status of people that can help explain the technology to them and then help them understand how do they put it together so they can then ultimately accomplish their overall kind of, you know, other kind of objectives from an IT perspective. And the other learning that I'll just say, and then I'll, and I'll stop here is SD-WAN isn't dead, right? SD-WAN is actually still driving and it's actually an impetus yeah. for a lot of other things that enterprise is actually doing, whether it's around, you know, SASE oriented services, remote access, private access, and other things of that nature. I totally agree. I think the networking stuff's still going to be so much innovation going on with the edge exploding as well. That's the really great, amazing stuff happening. Thanks for coming on this CUBE conversation. Great conversation. Taking it to the edge. Network challenges in the distributed hybrid workforce era is about moving things around the internet, making them secure. I'm John Furrier, your host. Thanks for watching.